the subject of my presentation is dealing with urbanization in south asia industrialization during the 19th century did cause urbanization and economic growth in many western countries the mechanization of agriculture also gave a further impetus to urbanization in those countries thus economic growth has come to be closely associated with urbanization but the past conditions that generated urbanization in the west are not necessarily the same as those causing urbanization today in the low and middle income countries i shall be referring to these in for these countries and for as the lmics the colonial impact did cause some urbanization in the lmics and also some serious hard to alter spatial disparities a spatial planning approach to deal with urbanization arose in the late 19th century britain based on a visionary utopian concept it gained much credence it is almost the only approach being currently pursued to confront urbanization in south asia with unfortunately poor results though perhaps appropriate to britain then its relevance to lmics today needs to be questioned the current scale and pace of urbanization in much of south asia are substantially greater than what was experienced earlier in the west thus today's south asian urbanization needs a different approach reliant not on utopian visions but on science the end of world war 2 saw the intrusion and popularity of economic growth theories this was to foster development in the lmics a school of thought emerged in 1953 which saw an lmic's economy as a duality a backward tradition bound agricultural sector on the one hand and on the other hand a small urban industrial sector where capitalism has been imported full blown from the west development was thus seen as a process wherein the latter progresses rapidly to overtake and dominate the former this dual economy theory was often bolstered by a faulty notion that marginal productivity of labor in agriculture is zero thus the faulty conclusion was that the rural sector of an lmic can be a limitless source of labor for urban industry without any reduction in agricultural product now i'm going to speak a little bit about some theories from spatial economics cities in rural settings and their formation became a focus of a german scholar in 1826 the theory he developed concerned the location of economic activities it also later in 1909 underpinned a theory of industrial location another german scholar in 
examine interurban configurations to develop a theory of central places. This work was continued in the US after World War II. Another Western scholar in 1970 was amongst the earliest to question the dual economy theory. He had understood that market forces alone cannot alter the colonial legacy of a skewed urban system in an LMIC. He believed that only intervention through a national policy could free an LMIC from this structural constraint. Now, two American scholars, one in 1939 and the other later in 1965, identified two distinct alternative patterns prevalent in the relationship between urban rank and urban size in a country, in a country. In one, rank and size of cities are closely correlated in a regular manner. In the other, the largest city predominates substantially in size over the next in rank. In this latter pattern, found in many LMICs, the first ranking urban place is called a primate city. Now please see figure one. This graph shows the cities in Sri Lanka. The largest city, Colombo, is clearly a primate city. An international aid agency has stressed that colonial policies reinforced by post-colonial economic growth strategies of the 1950s and 1960s caused in most Asian countries the rapid growth of primate cities to extraordinary size. That the earlier emphasis was on urban industry over rural development, that in countries with dominant primate cities, the growth of secondary cities are severely constrained and cannot attract rural migrants, stimulate rural economies, and thereby promote regional development. On the same tack, another scholar concluded in 1986 that a well-developed system of secondary cities would provide much more balanced urbanization and economic growth. Two other scholars in 1988 also justified spatial programs for the development of secondary urban places. Their work was based on reviews of over 100 empirical studies across the LMICs and a large number of national programs. Now, to conclude, urbanization in South Asia is best confronted not with utopian visions, but with scientific theories in the field of spatial economics. Accordingly, the common occurrence of rural migrations to the largest cities should be discouraged. The more manageable scenario is where most migrants move in progression to small and mid-sized urban places. Then, movement to the large cities would mostly be by already urbanized migrants from the mid-sized towns. This preferred pattern of migration is referred to 
as decentralized urbanization. Thank you very much.